Today we're jumping into AI video creation with Leonardo's newest video model, Motion 2.0. And I'm gonna guide you step-by-step step through how to use it to create high-quality, eye-catching videos while also making sure you leave with a solid understanding of Leonardo as a whole. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll feel confident using Motion 2.0, whether you're a brand new to Leonardo or maybe already familiar with it. You'll see how the latest features work, how to customize your results, and how to turn your ideas into reality with AI-powered motion. And these days, AI tools like Leonardo Motion 2.0 are helping businesses unlock creativity and work faster than ever before. But while AI helps you create, every business still needs a way to connect with customers, build relationships, and drive real growth. And that's where OmniSend comes into play. OmniSend is the ultimate email and SMS marketing platform trusted by over 150,000 businesses. It's not just a tool, it's how you turn your audience into loyal customers. And what makes it stand out is how it balances power with simplicity. OmniSend is expert approved yet beginner friendly without being clunky. You can connect your store, set up automations and launch campaigns without a steep learning curve. And here's my favorite part, automation made simple. You can set up workflows like welcome series, abandoned cart recovery, and post-purchase follow-ups in just minutes. Plus, with built-in A-B testing and campaign boosters, it's easy to optimize open rates and clicks without any technical hassle. Plus, OmniSend backs you with 24-7 human support, so whenever you need help, you're covered. So if you're ready to pair your AI creativity with a marketing platform that actually drives results, give OmniSend a try. And I'll leave a link in the video description below or just scan the QR code on the screen so you can get started today. Okay, on that note, let's get into Leonardo Motion 2.0. All right, from Leonardo's main dashboard, on the left-hand side of the screen is your navigation menu. Go ahead and find the AI Tools section and click Video to open the video generator. This is where the magic happens, and let me give you a quick tour. Over on the left-hand panel, you'll see the video generation settings. You can select the model, turn motion control and motion elements on or off, and fine-tune the look of your video with options like vibe, lighting, and color theme. And we'll go over these features in greater detail as we start making videos. At the very top of the workspace is the prompt bar where you'll type out the description of the video you want to generate. Then just below that, you could toggle between image, video, or flow state, depending on what you're trying to create. We're creating a video, so we'll keep that one selected. On the right-hand side, you'll see a generate button along with the amount of tokens it costs to generate the video or videos. Then on the left is a picture icon and clicking that allows you to upload an image to use as a starting frame for your video. Ending frame isn't available just yet as of August 2025, but it's coming soon. At the top of the screen, you'll see your token balance. This is where you can keep track of how many credits you have left, and it's updated in real time as you generate videos and images. Then if you hover your mouse over it, a detailed breakdown of your plan will pop up where you can upgrade and purchase more tokens if needed. Below that, you'll see your AI creation space, and this is where all your previously generated content is displayed. You could scroll through the feed and click on any clip to review or reuse what you've made. Okay, so that's Leonardo's user interface. Let's move on and create an AI video with their new video models. To start creating your video, Head up to the top of the workspace and click inside the prompt bar where it says type a prompt and make sure video is selected underneath and then go ahead and enter your prompt. And for this example, I'm using early morning in a peaceful garden with soft golden sunlight streaming through the trees. A woman in her 20s sits cross-legged on a yoga mat, eyes closed, hands resting gently on her knees. She takes a deep, slow breath, her posture relaxed and shoulders lowered. The warm light highlights her face and upper body, creating a calming glow. Now, you'll notice that I'm being pretty descriptive here. Not all prompts have to do that. You also have a prompt enhancer, which we'll show you in just a sec, but I like using some descriptive text whenever I create my prompts. It usually helps with the final output. Now, you'll also notice the generate button updates to show the token cost for your selected model. By default, it's set to motion 2.0, which uses 300 tokens per generation. And speaking of that, in order to change the model, go to the left-hand panel and click the drop-down 
menu under where it says model. And by default, Motion 2.0 is already selected, but this opens all of the available models, including two Google models, which are VO3 Fast and VO3. Then there's Leonardo's internal models, which are Motion 2.0, Motion 2.0 Fast, Motion 1.0, and a placeholder for one that's coming soon. And again, by default, Motion 2.0 is selected. You'll see the sidebar contains all of the configuration settings as well as the amount of tokens it costs to use this model on the button, which again is 300 per video. Then if we select Google's model, VO3, you'll notice that the configuration settings are different as well as the amount of tokens per generation, which this one costs 2,500 for this model, significantly more, but some say that's because the quality is better but you could be the judge of that whenever we use it a little later on. However, for now, let's switch back to Leonardo's Motion 2.0 video model. Next, let's take a look at Motion Control. Over on the left panel, click that drop down, and this opens up a menu where you could choose from a wide range of cinematic camera effects that influence how your scene moves. By default, it's set to none, but you've got a lot of other options to choose from, like bullet time, crane down, crash zoom, dolly left, orbit right, and many more. Each one applies a specific camera movement to your video, giving it more energy, style, or drama, depending on your scene. And for this particular example, I'm gonna leave it off, but we will be using motion control a little later on so you can see the difference it makes when applying dynamic camera movements to your videos. Next, let's take a look at the motion elements. And this menu lets you apply different stylistic treatments or animation overlays to your video. It's set to none, again, by default, but you could choose from options like 90s retro anime, old VHS, felted, simple flat animation, etc. And for this example, I'm gonna go with moody realism. It gives the video a cinematic and emotional tone, which fits the calm and serene setting that I'm trying to build. And you'll just click on the style you want and it will be selected instantly and applied to your prompt. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is consistency. If you're creating a series of clips that will be edited together, try to stick with the same motion element across all of them. This helps keep a unified look and feel throughout your video instead of jumping between drastically different styles. Next, we have the Prompt Enhance feature, and you'll find it just below Motion Elements on the left panel, and when you click on that dropdown, you'll see three options. First is Automatic, and this will expand short prompts for you, but it won't change longer, more detailed prompts. On means every prompt that you enter will be refined automatically by the AI to try and improve the output. And then Off leaves your prompts exactly as you've written them with no changes made by the AI. And for this example, I'm switching prompt enhance to off. That way the AI will generate the video directly from my prompt without adding anything extra. This could be useful if you want full control over the wording and you don't want the system making adjustments in the background. Next, let's take a quick look at the style settings. You'll see three categories here, vibe, lighting, and color theme. Starting with the vibe, this controls the overall visual tone or artistic direction of your generation. You can go for looks like clay, color sketch, sci-fi, logo, etc. And if you want a more realistic or neutral look, there's a stock footage or none option. Moving on to lighting, this affects how your scene is lit. You've got everything from dramatic styles to candlelit, golden hour, etc. There are also some more creative options like light art, luminous, or mystical. And then finally, there's color theme, which lets you apply a specific palette to unify your scene's mood or tone. And this is helpful when you're trying to match a brand aesthetic or you just want your visuals to feel more cohesive. Next, let's quickly go over the remaining options in the left-hand panel. First is generation mode. You could choose between fast at 480p or quality at 720p. Fast is useful if you just want a quick preview, while quality takes a little longer to generate but gives you a sharper result. Below that are your video dimensions. You can generate in 2x3, 4x5, 16x9, or 9x16. You'll want to pick the one that best fits your platform. For example, 16x9 is great for YouTube, while 9x16 works well for TikTok or Instagram Reels. Next, we have the number of videos, and by default, it's set to one, but you can generate multiple variations at the same time. This is helpful if you want different takes and don't want to rerun the same prompt over and over. And if you click that arrow there, it'll open a drop down where you can select additional options beyond four, up to eight per prompt. Just keep in mind that the more videos you generate in one go, the more tokens it will cost. Next, we have the private mode switch. If you don't want your video generations or images to be visible in Leonardo's public community feed, you can toggle on private mode. Just flip that switch there, and when it's active, your videos or images won't appear in the shared feed, so only you will be able to view it from your personal dashboard. 
Below that is the add to collection. This is where you can organize your projects into collection folders. Next is advanced settings. You'll find a couple extra tools here. First is smooth video. This helps clean up frame transitions so the motion feels more natural. And then below that is negative prompt. This lets you specify what you don't wanna see in your video, giving you more control over the output. And if you flip that switch on, a new field will appear directly under your main prompt bar labeled negative prompt. And this is where you could type in anything you specifically don't wanna appear in your video. For example, you might enter blurry distorted faces or text if you're trying to avoid those in your final output. It's a helpful way to guide the AI and reduce unwanted elements in your generations. And finally, at the very bottom of the panel, you'll see the reset to defaults button. Clicking this instantly resets all your settings back to their original defaults. It's useful if you've made a lot of changes and wanna quickly start fresh. All right, once you've configured your settings, it's time to make the video. So whenever you're ready, click the generate button within the prompt box there towards the upper right side of the screen. And you'll notice that this one costs us 300 tokens, which isn't bad considering the quality we get. Also, after clicking generate, you'll see your video being created in the feed below. It usually takes 30 seconds or so, but while it's generating, let me go over some of these buttons. First on the left is an arrow icon. Clicking that will let you reuse the exact prompt here so you don't have to type it again. Then to the right of the prompt is a plus icon. Clicking that expands the prompt text so you could see the full prompt used. Then to the right of that are the various configurations used to make the video. This gives you a quick snapshot of what styles, model, generation mode, etc. were used. Then if you click that three dot icon, it opens an additional menu where you'll find options to upscale, regenerate, download, view details, etc. It's basically a quick access panel for managing your creations without leaving the workspace. All right, once the video is done generating, the final output will show up here in your feed and clicking on it gives you a full preview so you could really see the finished result in motion. And this clip looks fantastic. You could clearly see how the moody realism motion element adds the cinematic emotional tone that we're going for, soft lighting, warm color palette, and subtle details all work together to give the video a calming, professional feel that matches the serene setting that was described in the prompt. Leonardo really brings the scene to life in a way that feels polished, natural, and professional. Then down in the lower right corner of the video, you'll notice three icons. The folder lets you add the video to a collection for easy organization. The arrow icon lets you download this video directly to your device or computer. And then the trash can is there if you wanna delete it. These quick tools make it simple to manage your creations right from the preview screen. Okay, next, let's take a look at how motion control can completely change the look and feel of the shot. So from the setting panel on the left, open the motion control menu. And for this example, I'm gonna choose the orbit right option. This adds a smooth camera movement that circles around the subject, making the scene feel more dynamic and cinematic compared to the static shot that we just made earlier. Okay, then once you've selected your motion control, just hit the generate button like before, and Leonardo will create a new version of the video using the same prompt and style settings, but with the added motion. And in a few moments, we get the result, you could see how the orbit right movement really enhances the scene, feels more alive and immersive as if a real camera operator were slowly moving around our subject. And this is a great way to add variety to your clips and keep your videos visually engaging. Finally, let's take a quick look at the difference between models. Up until now, we've been using Leonardo's Motion 2.0, but let's see how it compares to Google's VO3. So from the left settings panel, click the model dropdown to open the model selector menu and then select VO3. Next under generation mode, you'll see two options, quality 720p and high quality 1080p. I'm just showing the 1080p option here, but for this demo, I'm leaving it on the quality 720p. And then I am using a different prompt. So in the prompt bar, I'm going to type Medium shot of a class sitting cross-legged in meditation, wearing yoga athletic clothing, eyes closed, peaceful expressions, gentle candlelight in the background, cinematic atmosphere of serenity and stillness. Then you'll notice the generate button updates to 2,500 tokens with VO3. Earlier with Motion 2.0, it was 300 tokens, so just keep that in mind whenever you're using different models and click generate to generate the video. Then I'll fast forward really quick, and here is the finished clip. Again, you can preview it by clicking on it, and you can see how VO3 renders the scene. 
candlelit class, we got soft, deep, and clean details, and it delivered a very polished cinematic result. Additionally, Leonardo's Motion 2.0 model only generates videos that are five seconds long at the moment, but VO3 gives us eight seconds. And in terms of quality, VO seems to render better, but you don't have the same control as when using Leonardo's style and motion control or elements. It really comes down to use case, but overall, Leonardo's video generation tools offer an impressive blend of accessibility, creative control, and quality. Motion 2.0 gives you great looking results at a lower token cost, making it perfect for quick and visually compelling content on a budget. VO3, on the other hand, takes things a step further with richer detail, smoother motion, and a more cinematic feel, ideal for when you need that extra layer of realism or polish. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you now have a solid understanding of how to use the new Motion 2.0 video model to create stunning, high quality videos and really bring your ideas to life with Leonardo AI powered motion. And before we wrap up, just a quick reminder, if you're serious about turning your creativity into a business, you'll need more than just great content. And that's where OmniSend comes in. With powerful automation, real-time analytics and 24 seven human support, OmniSend email marketing makes it simple to run email and SMS campaigns that actually drive results. So once you've finished experimenting with Leonardo and all the video motion 2.0, make sure to check out the link in the video description below or scan the QR code on the screen to get started with OmniSend today. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, if you're looking to start a blog, check out these two videos on how to build, grow, and monetize a WordPress blog. They'll walk you through the entire process step by step. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family, and for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.